Hounds for Heroes was set up five years ago by a forces veteran to provide assistance dogs to ex-service personnel with a disability. It followed his own life being transformed by a Labrador named Endel, who gave him a quality of life he couldn't possibly believe following a serious injury. Our reporter Shan Robbins caught up with him at a fundraising event and heard his moving story. Alan Parton served in the Royal Navy for 26 years, working his way up the ranks to earn his commission. His job was electronic engineering and he worked mostly at HMS Collingwood. During the first Gulf War he was designing weapon systems, but it was during a collection of munitions that he was involved in an incident that left him in hospital for five years with a very traumatic head injury. I lost all memory of my wife and children, 50% of my life history, I couldn't read, write, walk or talk and I have to admit it to this audience, while I was at Headley Court for five years I had two attempts of suicide because I couldn't reconcile being this disabled person, there was no book of reference to that in my whole life and yeah I, I was in a pretty dark and desperate place. Alan's wife Sandra was told that her husband would never talk and would never communicate again. She was a nurse with children at school and her husband going to daycare when she became a puppy parent for assistance dogs. One day she took Alan to her puppy training class when his bus didn't come for him and it was a Labrador with health problems and a bad attitude that became the key to unlocking Alan. He wouldn't do anything for anyone if you asked him, which in the assistance dog world is not that endearing. And, you know, if you drop something, he'd look at you and say, well, you dropped it, you can pick it up, which really maybe wasn't the, the motivation we needed. But he saw me in the wheelchair. I presented as someone highly autistic. He'd come across the training centre without any prompting that day, picked something off the floor and stuck it in my lap. And he wanted a reaction and he got nothing. He got the stone wall and this really hacked this dog off. He had a pretty bad attitude as it was, but this really pushed him to go and do something else. So he went to the mock-up supermarket and took a tin off the shelf. That didn't work. He went to the grooming parlour and I swear there was a couple of puppies on my lap at the end of it all. But just before I completely disappeared, the brain switched on and I smiled. And that night, Endel came home with me and stayed for a modest 15 years. And... Uh, I couldn't speak, but the dog learnt sign language, hat, razor, gloves, coat. He learned about a thousand commands of signing, which frustrated my family. Cause though I couldn't communicate with them, I could with the dog. He learnt to put me in the recovery position if I collapsed at home, cover me with a blanket, hit the emergency phone. If that didn't work, it opened the window and barked for help. He was so intuitive, and one day he even showed the world he could operate a cash point machine by putting the card in, taking the card, the money, the receipt out. And he was voted Dog of the Millennium for that, and he won a lot of awards. He was voted the world's most intelligent dog. But on a daily basis, he was doing something I never perceived. I'd lost all my emotions. And I believe as a human being, without one of your love, hate, happiness or sadness emotions, you can't be human. And I'd lost all four. And on a daily basis, the dog was teaching me, lost her. He made me laugh. And that was amazing, you know, that I could suddenly find myself laughing. Endel was instrumental in re-engaging Alan with his life. And he got married again eight years ago because he still had no memories of his marriage to his wife, Sandra, the first time. Out of 98 of us badly injured in the Gulf in 91, only five marriages survived today. And Endel was my best man at my second wedding. Though Alan and Sandra have moved on with their lives and adapted to how things are now, Alan is conscious of the emotional impact to Sandra. When I sailed away, my wife waved goodbye to me on the round tower with the children, but the husband and father who returned was, was not the same person. And the advice to my wife was divorce me, put me in a war pensioner's home and move on because she had two young children. And that was quite sound advice, actually, because I didn't know her, I didn't love her, because I believe without memory you can't have an emotion. And I didn't love her, I didn't know her. And uh, it was quite hard, but for my wife it was immensely hard because, you know, the person who presented was her husband, but in himself, was a decent person and and life really did get hard at home and there were times I'm sure she felt like she couldn't cope anymore maybe being a nurse she found in the strength to take on the nursing role but it you know slowly day by day that dog nurtured me back down there and uh, and uh, you know that emotion of love that, that that wanting to be and whatever the reason was I fell in love with my wife the first time certainly was still there why I fell in love the second time 
and uh, you know we've we've been through it and, and when we said for better and worse the second time in the wedding we probably knew what we were talking about we weren't these young you know young sailor with his wife we, we were pretty you know street wise by then and you know in getting remarried again we were saying goodbye to what we couldn't change the memories i couldn't remember but does Sandra still, you know, have a hard time with it? I would actually say she does because around Remembrance Day, she still grieves quite, quite loudly for the for the husband that she did know. She loves the new person, but she still grieves for that original father because I'm I've had to learn new emotions. They might not equate to everyone else's, and I'm not quite that same person. But we, you know, we are committed and we've moved on. But yes, Sandra still mourns the original Alan that she married. Endel and Alan were devoted to each other until sadly Endel had two fits that affected his eyesight and balance. I had to call the vet to come out to put him to sleep, which was very hard because I didn't see him. It's just a dog. This was a dog that had given me everything for 15 years. And uh, when the vet came out and Endel was put into my lap to be put to sleep, he gave me something I didn't see coming, you know, and, you know, someone described my life like a jigsaw puzzle smashed asunder in the golf. Every day Endel had gone off and found a missing bit of the puzzle. But, you know, that day as he took his final breath, he gave me something so precious. He gave me the gift of sadness because I cried for the first time since I was injured in 91. And, you know, it gave me love, hate, happiness and sadness. And, uh, you know, I was back with my family and ironically in the corner of the room was a little dog, very frightened, one year old Labrador called Endel. Junior EJ and this little dog completely transformed my life he picked up the baton that day hanky in his mouth to wipe away the tears and he hasn't stopped since this is Shan Robbins for That's Solent <laughs>